<laughs> That's what you call a bona fide yeah. crowd pleaser. Yeah. Even though Alice now, what's he, 63, 63, <laughs> like singing about school? <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> doesn't have the same meaning anymore, does We're it? We're here with Mr John Humphreys. Is it not Sir John? It's sir will do. Yeah, no, sir, you can call me day. Sir. No, but be informed, Mr Humphreys. Lord Just Humphreys? Lord You've got a Lord OBE, Lord. MBE, I, I think it's very, very likely that Alison Campbell would recommend me for a night. If I you think... It. I'm waiting any day now. I'm expecting it. You've eased your path there, haven't you? Eased my path. Alistair Campbell. What a dukedom. Interesting bloke 10,000 acres. <laughs> yeah, a fiefdom. Fiefdom. <laughs> <laughs> country. Uh, Mr John Humphreys no, is here. Alistair um, John, do you, are you a fan of the popular music? Do you like I, uh, Alice Cooper? Not, not, not a lot, really. Have you ever not, put Alice Cooper makeup on? I've <laughs> never yet put that. Never yet. But you should never close anything. Not up. even for, like, children in need? <laughs> I did think of it occasionally. The Today programme, Alistair Campbell comes along and I'm wearing Alistair... Yes, it's a thought, isn't it? Alistair Campbell, what a lovely bloke. Or book. Alice Campbell, as Do you think he's listening? Do you think he listens into Radio Almost certainly. When he's not listening to the Today programme. I bet you he's mildly obsessed by you. Do you think so? I bet he's yeah, oh, I bet he keeps you're an just, idea. You're just trying to be nice. I wouldn't be surprised if in a few years' time he, Stop he stalks you. <laughs> well, really? What? You're from to, the school gates. You you'll have yeah. to get a restraining order. <laughs> <laughs> Stop sending me your undergarments. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happened to Mandelson? Where's Whatever happened to be the Mandelson? That's very quick. He's still around. Yeah, he's still around. Still, still working. Still working yeah, for a living. Yeah, well, no, he's an MP, but I mean, he would work if he wasn't. But you like them, really, don't you? You get on well with them. I get on well. Well, I don't. No, I know they get on with. Them nor don't get on with them. I don't have anything to do with them really. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm not a sort of groupie, you know. I don't. I don't go to all the receptions and the parties. You don't. You don't exchange yeah. numbers I, with Anne Whitaker. I don't. Ah, like, oh, well, she's the exception. Yeah. yeah. She's quite. Yeah. I find she her quite is, charming uh, actually. She's all right. She's funny, yeah. and she has a sense of her own. Um, I was going to say her own importance, the opposite of that. That's yeah. the nice thing about her. She knows it's all a bit silly. Well, she knows lots of it is a bit silly. And she's and now she's gone so. blonde, rings and in now she's gone blonde and she reckons it makes her look 30 years younger and she's lost a lot of weight. I, like, I prefer and her big. Fun. You prefer You like them big, do you, John? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll take what I can get, John. You but take, you know, well, I understand that. <laughs> you, know, but, you know, within reason. I mean, you know, don't tell Mandy that. But <laughs> Ah, which one? Do you know, we're back yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's not... We, 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 see, we've gone too quickly in the politics. I want to build to that because that's really what your bread and butter is. Yeah. Your best known I thought we were going to come and talk about tennis and, and, and you're wanting bigger balls. Are you a tennis fan? I saw, I tell you, can I tell you, I left just outside, glancing at the last little wrist. Hold it, we just must stop a second. John's just put on some glasses. They I'll are the gayest <laughs> glasses. <laughs> now, when you say the gayest, do you mean the most colourful? They're so colourful. They are they're colourful. Like, but they're like, you would express. Present from my brother, £4.50, <laughs> fell off the back of the lorry. They're like, no. uh, uh, was Hyacinth Bouquet would wear. <laughs> are they? Yeah, they're like, they really are. They're, they're like That's an elderly nice. spinster's glasses. John, I have to not like an elderly spinster. They are psychedelic glasses. Circa 1960, you should recognise them. I think them. you're after a, a, a spec saver important. commercial or something <laughs> there. I'm What's, going. There, I'm look going. at those glasses. Listen, I want to read you a letter you with have a my pince glasses nez. in the Guardian because <laughs> it has to do with your big balls. Oh, let's see. It does. It does. Yes, a nurse who gets six, th- sixteen thousand pounds a year must get it right first time. Miss the upper outer quadrant of the buttock. All right, you right. with me so far? Yes, yes, yes. And the needle might hit the sciatic nerve. Curtains for the patient's mobility Ooh. and probably in the nurse's career. A tennis player, £8,000 for losing a match, misses the upper outer quadrant where they serve and is allowed another go. Forget smaller rackets, abolish the second serve. So you have your suggestion for improving Wimbledon. Bigger balls, I have mine. I have, I just have thought a, I'd mention Let's that. bring them together. Let's get a nurse out there with a needle. If they miss the first serve, they have a shot of the sciatic no. thingamajig. What? Yeah. I'm very glad. I'm glad you raised and that. And you could have a gay chicken calling line. It's confusing me now. Now you see there's too many references coming in. Sorry. John. I'll stop. You ask the questions and I'll ask them. You're not used to being asked the questions, are you? We can tell. He's coming. He's seized control of the show. I don't like it. It is funny. Do you really not like it? No. Well, you're not in control, are you? Yeah, but yeah. to an extent you're sitting here twittering, wondering what's he going to ask me next. Oh, well, don't worry. It's all, it's all you know. There's, it's not like one of your interviews, don't yeah. worry. <laughs> <laughs> we we don't know what we're doing here. See, that's the difference you between us, John. You so firmly do. You think we do? Do you really think? Yeah, that? you do. Yeah. Whenever I listen, listen, in, I go in there. There are the questions prepared for me by Alistair Campbell, and I ask. <laughs> no, How no. come Labour is so lovely these days? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else you can do to serve this great nation of ours that you haven't already done? But they're not doing so badly, really, are they? So John right. is about um, to. Uh, yeah, there was a moment of silence. <laughs> <laughs> we cut off. Do you think? I, I think so. There was a blip. Yeah. Do you, do you that, avoid you commenting can't. though on on the way politics? I avoid doing. commenting on party politics. Yeah, I mean, I write a column for the Sunday Times and things like that. That some people say I shouldn't. I don't think there's a problem. Well, that show wouldn't would I? Because I do it. Um, but what I don't do is get involved in party politics. I don't say Tony Blair is a better leader of the party than Ian Duncan Smith is a leader of his party. I don't say Gordon Brown is a dreadful chancellor. 
their policies are crap. I don't do that. But I talk about issues. The issue you know, at the time and the, the Tony moment. Ben's issues yeah. as opposed to personality. Yeah, and I think everybody... Look, do you really think, does anybody really think that somebody who presents three hours of live radio on Radio 4 every morning of the week has no views on anything? Of course you do. Of course, course. you've got views. I've got views about organic farming and intensive agriculture and big balls at tennis and things like that. Um, and I don't pretend not to. You could have a computer, you could have a, an ask your weight machine asking all the questions, but I don't think people want that. But you don't, you don't allow it to colour the, the, uh, the, the interview too greatly, I've noticed. I mean, presumably, you know, you're coming in and you're giving everyone a, a, an equally, not difficult, but an equally kind of um, challenging time. Well, you're devil's advocate, aren't you? I mean, you do. Tony Blair <laughs> once suggested to me that perhaps I should be a barrister. Perhaps he was delivering a message to me. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, but what you do is you challenge the argument. I mean, I'm one of those people who likes arguing. I suspect you are too. Uh, you'd argue about anything, wouldn't you? I quite, well, I, like quite, I quite like the cut and thrust of conversations. Exactly. Though. Not necessarily an argument. In which no, but the same thing. I mean, it's fun. If somebody disagrees with you, it's fun having... Yeah, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And, 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 like, my old man used to pick an argument about anything. It wouldn't matter what. You know, blue skies, you'd say, lovely day. Why is it lovely day? You know? What if you're in the Sahara? Go on, I bet huh? it was, I bet I mean, it was fun in your race. house. <laughs> What's fun? I think getting stuck on a long journey with that family. <laughs> Can we stop for lunch? Why do you want lunch? <laughs> and then the mum chips in. No, I don't want lunch either. <laughs> Why are you calling well, it lunch? You knew my father. Then, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, is that what really shaped you then, do you think? Do you think it was... Uh, yeah. a, a bit of that, yeah. He was a contrary... Bug. Are you allowed to say... No, you're not allowed to say that on the radio. He was contrary. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it, 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 it sort of filters through, doesn't it? And we argued about everything. We disagreed about everything as well, almost everything. But that was all right. And did he, did he get we to see... we weren't allowed him? to argue politics at the table. My my mother would not have that. We won't have politics spoken in this house, she'd say. But you know what? That is yeah. a great rule. That's the old-fashioned way. The you, don't, you don't discuss politics or religion when exactly. you have guests around. Absolutely and right. Quite or quietly. at all in the yeah. house. She would not have it. Yeah. And you, you shouldn't say Labour. We, we don't labor, discuss politics really. in my house because none of us really know anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> what does it? Like most of, most of most people in this country, we pretend we do, but we don't really know. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Mastermind because I'm genuinely excited about the return oh, of Mastermind. Good. It was a show I loved as a yeah. I loved it. And I even had the little game you used to play with the little coloured... Remember the little yes, coloured thing yeah, you put in yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. That was 25 years ago. More than that. Well, no, 25. Yeah, it's you, about 25 years ago. You can still ago, buy it if you know where to look. Good God. It's still out there. Um, you, must be, you must be looking forward to it. Have you recorded them? Yeah, we've done, uh, we done 16 programmes already. And that's the, yeah. Is that the whole one of the first series? No. Well, yes, there's the finals yet to come. Right. But we've got... We've done through the quarterfinals and all that so yeah we've, we've nearly finished yeah. so what tempted you into something which many will see as a step into more kind of a, you know a lighter form of actual entertainment well, as but that's part of the appeal of it I mean, you shouldn't be stereotyped should you typecast whatever it is yeah. fun a bit of fun and you actually enjoy doing it as well love as... it well i didn't like the first couple because i was not prepared i thought it would be a doddle mm. and you know what it's like you've been in broadcasting for 107 years you think you know it all and then you do something completely different and you think oh my god this is more difficult than i thought and it isn't Actually, all that. Of course, it's not. It's not rocket science, but they give you hundreds of questions which you have to try to understand a little bit anyway. Uh, f all sorts of funny pronunciations, subjects sometimes you've never even heard of. Of course, yes. And then bang, bang, bang. You have to deliver them like a machine gun cracker, and you can't muck them up because if you do, you waste time for the person who wants to answer them. Well, this so is something. When I was a kid watching, I always think, "Oh, did Magnus took longer on that question than this one." And uh, well, they work all that many... out. They time. They they have the questions in such an order from one to twenty-five, yeah. and they time them they read them and time them so that if you get a short if, if you get three short questions you'll then get three medium ones or three long ones to balance it up so everybody in theory unless they muck about yeah. get exactly the same number of questions in their allotted two minutes and that's the way it works have yeah. you had any any coughing people in the audience yet you got any of that going we, on we checked on that no no we've uh, we've, we've been a bit look the, the nice thing about the program is that it doesn't matter. There's not a million quid at stake. Yeah. And the people who do it are genuine enthusiasts. I mean, some of them are the kind of people who do quizzes all their life. You know, that's what they do. You ask yeah. them what they do, and they say, oh, I do quizzes. And you think, oh, sad. But actually, it isn't that sad. You know, what's wrong with doing quizzes? I love a quiz. Oh, exactly. They seem more popular than ever before now. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the reasons why they brought quiz. the show back, because yeah. Yeah, they did a... a a celebrity version of it over the, over New Year. It had an enormous audience, biggest audience on BBC Two over the whole festive season. And I was invited to take part in that, and I ah! I declined. Ah! Will you come on one with me? No, and is I this a guarantee? Why not? Because oh. I know full well that there are such glaring gaps in my general knowledge. Ah, that's it. That's what you see. That's, that's where I will fall exactly. down and look like a complete. Yeah, exactly. Well, look, what if we said you could have two specialist subjects instead of a general knowledge one? I would uh, that, and also if you would promise to occasionally wink when you, <laughs> yeah. you know. Well, look, if, if I, I gave you. 
advice. Look, if I gave you the questions ahead of time, the, uh, maybe I, I think about that. <laughs> I'll but take that as a yes. It's, it takes a certain <laughs> amount of bravery for oh, anyone. Enormous bravery, absolutely. Because as you say, you. Can't, I mean, we had one young woman who um, chose whatever the Harry Potter or something, and she knew everything there was to know about Harry Potter. And got all that right, I guess. Yeah, and exactly. General knowledge question. Oh my God! Yeah. You know, and the panic in the face. Well, often you know as well. You know, you, you know your subject. But you can't bring it to your head. You know it's there. That's it, the it's frustrating exactly. thing. Exactly. There was a very, very bright woman, elderly lady, absolutely sharp as that, deeply, clearly intelligent woman, and uh, and she did reasonably well on her, uh, uh, her specialist subject. Then we got the general knowledge, and you knew that she knew the answers. She just couldn't get them. Mm. So she hesitated, and she tried a bit of this, now. and you wanted to say, look, just, just, just pass. You know, move on to the next one. I, you know, go on, but she sat there agonising, and I felt so sorry for her. That's it's it. unusual for me, this Jonathan, to be it's sitting there so feeling, feeling sorry, sorry for someone on the other side of the microphone. They're probably more scared of you as well. <laughs> we have to go to the news. We'll chat some more about Mastermind and other stuff afterwards. 88 to 91 FM. This is Radio 2 from the BBC. The late great Edwin Starr, another one who uh, was taken a bit too soon for my liking, to be honest mm. with you. No, I suppose it's never a good time, is it? John Humphreys, I'm pleased to say, is still with us. I am. Um, <laughs> in body, if not in spirit. <laughs> well, no, no in spirit, if not in body. I think we've got you all. Yeah. Um, and not he's lot, about to start on your TV screens on Monday night on BBC Two. 8pm is the time. Make sure you tune in to see him as the host of the New Look Mastermind. Now, I say New Look, but presumably they haven't changed the set. Not that very much. much. I went along with all sorts of terribly clever ideas how to improve it, and they listened. You know how they do. Very yeah. politely, we have this little meeting, and they all said, yes, no, that's very... Oh, I'm cool. Yeah, they're terribly interesting idea, that, John. Yeah, no, really. Mm. Then they went away and did none of them. <laughs> but that's great that they're keeping people to the idea, because yeah, as soon yeah, as you introduce yeah. a gunk tank, you know, uh, you've lost it. Well, I, 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 I tell you I wanted that. Yeah, and right. the feathers, you know, you drop the tank, you came out, all the feathers <laughs> dropped. Actually, but, you know, an idea of tarring and feathering someone <laughs> around that <laughs> if they lose, yeah, that would not be a bad idea. <laughs> no mind winning something, you just... Are we back to that. Alistair Campbell now? <laughs> hey, <laughs> you like it. Um, and the, the people, you mentioned some of the people who've been taking part, and you yeah. mentioned a, a very smart woman you met there. Overall, the standard of competitors, are you impressed? Oh, hugely. Enormously. I mean, the big thing is, well, we were saying, weren't we, you, know, you do brilliantly on the chosen subject, the special subject, and then you get the general knowledge thing and you see the panic in the eyes yeah. and all that. But it's extraordinary how many of them are just generally smart. Really? I mean, big argument this uh, w the other day about whether, if you're good at answering questions like that, it makes you intelligent. And I think the giveaway is when you ask somebody, all right, Specialist subject, you can mug it up, and that's that. Unless it's that. a very, very wide one. I mean, one woman chose the flora and fauna of Great Britain. Wow. My God. You that's know, that's vast. Everything. The history yeah. of everything. But other people are much more specific, and you can mug that up. Then you get to the general... Uh, and, and it's when people don't know the answer, but you can see them working it out. Hmm. And then that says, you know, this person knows a bit, they're thinking a bit, they're, yeah, you know, yeah. they're smart. You can see their intelligence at work Absolutely. as opposed to just Absolutely. sort of learning. Yeah. Um, the specialist subjects themselves, are you surprised by some of the choices? Uh, I mean, what, what Gobsmacked, kind of... yeah. I mean, the Times did a big piece this morning, a whole page on it, trying to prove, I think they were trying to prove, that, that it had dumbed down. Because we have things like The Simpsons. Well, I mean, why not have things like The Simpsons yeah. part of popular culture? Also one of the greatest television programmes ever made. Perfectly valid stand, subject. Yeah, perfectly valid subject. But, you know, Graham Greene, and oh, Shakespeare and having Robespierre and heaven knows what. Haven't no, heard no, of that. Haven't heard of those three. I've heard of the Simpsons. Simpsons. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they're all in the Simpsons. You'll find they're all in the Simpsons, I think. Didn't carry the Simpsons. <laughs> they yeah, did yeah, a cameo. Yeah. Tony Blair, exactly. Yeah. yeah, Shakespeare was awfully good doing his cameo. Yeah. Robespierre, that's, no, that's Robespierre. a special subject yeah, from the old school. Special subject. Oh, lots of that still. We have not dumbed down. They, we have not dumbed down. Yeah. Absolutely and and, and not. How, who decides whether or not a special subject is indeed too specialist? It's ah, well, they have a big debate about that. Because, as I say, it can be as narrow as you like, or it can very broad. If it's too broad, then they get slightly edgy because they wonder how well... I mean, a woman wanted, uh, had um, children's books from 1860 to the present. Wow. I mean, 143 years of children's it's books. It's almost impossible to keep up the ones published last year. Precisely. Mm. And did brilliantly at it. And I would have thought, that silly, you know, narrow it down. And I asked her about that afterwards, and she said, well, I just thought I knew it, really. But and she know, did. Here's the thing. I think when someone... When there's a subject you love, that you genuinely yes. love, you, you kind of absorb it. It's almost like osmosis. You just soak up that knowledge. And you're, you, you're living and breathing it all the time. Exactly. It's your big interest. Exactly. John, for you, what but, would be yours? But then if... Uh, Oh, I did be you, Jonathan. It would I think <laughs> probably. Now, I think to be no to be entirely serious about it. I think it would be your noisy girlfriends because you mentioned them earlier. Yeah, <laughs> you, not so much said, anymore. You said <laughs> well, no. I'll be honest but, with you. I've never but, had any noisy girlfriends. What were your special? I used to do the ladies' voices as well in there. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> what would your special subject be? Perhaps you could do it now. I, I would have a number. I could do a number, I think. Oh, I could do um, American comic book artists from, say, the 1940s to the present day. Hmm? American comic book yeah, artists? Who drew that. Superman? Well, uh, which period are we talking uh, about? Ah, all right, 1953. 1953 would probably have been either Kurt Swan cool. or Wayne Boring. Wow. You're yeah. not allowed to. You'd have to Might have been... One. Well, no, because they, they all did at different times. They all took turns. Oh. It might have been Kurt Schaffenberg or even. Ah. Well, I'm, you, I'm not you, making these you, names You've up. got to watch this because we've got comic books. Comics and right. comic books. Uh -huh. And did you know, here's a little factoid for you, when they brought the ships into Liverpool yeah. to pick something up from America, to pick something up, the ballast was comics. Don't did start you know me that? on ballast and comics, John. Well, I know all about it. And I'll you tell do. you, for, of oh. course I know oh. that. And shall I tell you why? Is there anything this man... I'll tell you why, John. Oh. As a child, yes, I would yes. get on my little bike, and these were the days when you could let kids go off on bikes, oh. and they would probably come back. Oh, yes. I'd go off on my bike, <laughs> and often to the disappointment I mean, of my parents. Like <laughs> <laughs> they send you off to Birmingham, yeah, you still came back. We yeah. would cycle for miles <laughs> looking for comics, because there was very limited distribution, and sometimes you'd find a shop that had comics that you knew had been bought up for ballast, because often they'd be a little bit warpy really? and too much moisture, yeah. Good God. That's how I got werewolf by night number two. <laughs> <laughs> Have you still got them? Illustrated by your, Michael Plug, written by Mike Friedrich. My God, you do know about this. Don't well, you, you start on that. <laughs> you have to Just go don't on the start program. on the general knowledge, please. <laughs> Andy, we've decided Andy, uh, Andy yeah. would be very good. He What's do... your specials one then? Donuts. Do you know? <laughs> donuts. <laughs> Elvis <laughs> Presley, I said, oh, not sorry. donuts. Yeah. Oh. But, oh. John, do you well, know the difference between... Seriously. What, what is the difference between Elvis Presley and a jam-filled donut? Yeah. Come on, huh? far away. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> you can't Go do it like that. Both, they both have a soft, sweet centre. <laughs> ah, you, you know? got it. You've been here before. There's a sugar frosting, but only one wears brill cream. <laughs> <laughs> Despite the way they look I've never had a donut with brill cream. Um, now, John, what would yours be, though? Seriously, I would you must not have this. Do you know what? I would no more sit in that chair than I would jump off the Seven Bridge naked. But you're, you're an erudite, in man. December, you're a well-read man. You, can do, mod you could do modern politics. You could do... I bet you could do the history of the Labour Party. Any of these things. Do you know what? I'd get about... Zero minus three. No. I wouldn't remember. I would. I wouldn't remember anything because I'd sit there and they'd say, "Now I said this," and I think, "God, have I got to now?" You mm. mean like now? I'll go away and answer it if you like, but do it now. That yeah. tension. I tried it. I went on food and drink quiz years ago. Some people will remember it. I couldn't remember my name. That's you not know. good. And your name is uh, 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 Jonathan. Uh, uh, I don't know. Panicking. I mean, panic. Yeah, absolute panic. With oh, that in oh, mind, oh, then, do you go? Do you try to go easy on the people in the chair? I mean, how can you? Yeah, sort do of, a, you, a, you must empathise. Yeah, well, you course, can't. Yeah. You you can't really go easy on them because you've got to ask the questions very, very, very fast. But yeah. what I find myself doing occasionally when somebody is clearly struggling, I mean, you're meant to look at the card and ask the questions, blah, 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 blah. But I look up and give them a little smile occasionally. It doesn't help. Try and course. soften it, make them feel... It doesn't help. Yeah. No, no, you've got to be horrible to them. Have you, yeah. And all that bit. Name, occupation, subject. Well, that's how... Because wasn't it... It was the, the person who invented Mastermind, wasn't this something... It was something to do with his experiences during the war, is you're that correct? Probably in a... Camp or something, yeah. I think yeah, there was a, a, a degree camp of commandant who thing. did the name, yeah. So yeah. Well, there is some connection there, yes. Because yes, I know in the early episodes as well, they used to have electrodes which they used to clamp onto. We, we've kept that. Stages. Yeah, we've kept yeah, that. We, well, well, the whole seat, the whole seat of the chair, and of course, we make men take their underpants off before they do. <laughs> did you know that? The whole <laughs> so, seat of the chair is. Sit in wet trousers. <laughs> <laughs> we're better at Alistair Campbell again, aren't we? <laughs> I'd uh, like to have him in the chair, wouldn't that be? I fun? bet you. What would your special subject be, Mr. Campbell? But you kind of do intimidate the BBC. But no, when they sorry. come on your show, mm. when they come on the Today Show, they are kind of in the chair. There is an element of that. Uh, uh, the yeah, but they choose them. to be there, mm. and they know what they're talking about, and they're dealing with their special subject, aren't they? It is frustrating so, though sometimes listening when you hear them trying to just kind of like fluster the way out of something to try yeah. and double talk. You get I, I sometimes get very frustrated hearing that, and I almost feel not sorry for them, but I kind of feel where's your self respect? Did, are they not aware that we know they're using flannel and double talk and... Well, I've got a theory about this, because I think there are three kinds of politicians. There are those who lie, not that many, and don't care about lying. There are those who will lie because they feel it's necessary. You know, like the Chancellor might say the state of the economy is X, Y and Z because we want to dry down the value of the pound or something. Course, yeah. And there are those who really do not like lying under any circumstances. And if you listen long enough and carefully enough, I mean, you know, get a life, I know, but if you did want to spend your life doing that, you'd be able to detect those three. I reckon I can <laughs> just about tell the difference now between those three categories of, of politician. And and do you, uh, who would be in the largest group? I mean, not, not, not naming names. <laughs> but 
a lot, didn't I? No, no. But the predominant, what's the, 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 most of them are those... Oh, I think most politicians, I, I think most politicians don't like, like, I mean, look, there's a big difference you between... You think fundamentally the decent people, then? Fundamentally decent people, but there's a big difference between the politician who is in power right. and in the cabinet or in the government, because then it's collective responsibility. And I mean, look, we had Frank Dobson on the programme, on the Today programme this morning, and Frank Dobson had been the Secretary of State for Health. When he was Secretary of State for Health, you get, get him in the chair opposite you, and he would defend everything the government was uh, doing, all policy. right down the line, because that's what they do. This morning, he was telling us about the 396 different ways in which the government had gone wrong and was continuing to go wrong. Yeah. Well, he was in government at the time. His justification for that would be, and I think it's probably fair, is, but I was part of the government and therefore collective responsibility comes into it. Yeah, but you see, this is something which I find... It really kind of depressing. But how else could you do it when you think about it? You well, couldn't have... there's a I tendency mean, Short, towards... In instance. any pa group in power, you know, you've got this... The handing over power to, to the oligarchy is a mistake, I think. You know, you've got... And it's the problem with yeah, democracy, but it's elected, a, isn't it? And we can chuck them out. I mean, yeah, that's you, the point. You can do it, but once they're in, if they're lying to you, it's very hard to find out what's going on. I, I think if you're elected and you say you're going to do something and it's not working, they've got to credit us eventually, not treat us as a bewildered herd who, ah, who well, don't want to be lied to. They patronise us. Yeah, so. they, I'm should, more concerned about the way we get patronised than I am about the way we get misled because it's for us to spot if we're yeah. being misled. There was, a, there was a bigger thing on Jeremy Vine's show over the last couple of weeks. I called him about trying to find Britain's most honest politician. Oh, yes. Did you hear this? Yeah. And I missed William the William Hague. Was it William Hague? But, but you know why William Hague? Did he win? He did. No. I think he did. <laughs> but, I, but listen, let me tell you my theory. It's a bit late for that. <laughs> let me give that. Ah, but that's exactly the point, you see. He's been out, effectively, out of politics for a long time. You know, they say, you, how can you tell a politician is lying when his lips move. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, we haven't seen William Hague's lips move for a long time, have yeah. we? Because he'd been out of the front line. So, people think, William Hague, oh yeah, I'm a bit sorry for him because he was, you know, all that stuff. And there's the hair dignity, loss and the, and the hair loss and all, all those, and, all those, and all those other things. <laughs> That's charming. He's leading a challenge wife, life. Wife, wife, charming, oh, they're charming, 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 they're married. charming she is too. Well, they're living together, I've been for a while. But we haven't heard from him. Therefore, he has... <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say therefore he hasn't he has lied, lied to us because saying, I don't, I'm not suggesting for a moment that he's got the sympathy vote. But, uh, exactly. He always had the sympathy vote <laughs> in my house. I always had the feeling she was working him. There were times when I, <laughs> I thought I saw her hand disappear up the back occasionally. <laughs> Maybe that's a bedroom thing. I don't know. Uh, let's have another track. What do we have, Andy? Line up a new single from the Wanna Dies. Oh, good. Called Disco. The oddly named The Wanna Dies there. What a great single, though. Yeah. Very, very nice Wanna indeed. Die. We're still here, Mr. John Humphreys. Uh, you know him best, of course, I'm sure, uh, from Radio 4, but he's now on the BBC doing Mastermind. Of course, you are one of the radio greats, John. Whether you like it or not, um, I've been around a very long time. That's essentially what it means. That's what it means. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've reached nearly sixty. I haven't died, and I don't dribble too much. If you've, so su if you've you survived <laughs> in the business, <laughs> yeah, exactly. but I was at the Sony Awards this year when you picked up the big award of the night. The big award of the night was the, and I think they're now calling it the John Humphreys Award. <laughs> <laughs> it was God, the award for being in radio for the longest <laughs> living. You know, the long. It's like when they find a fossil. Yeah, quite. <laughs> I can't believe yes. it. And they you scrape it. It was the very DNA. thoughtful of them to set that wheelchair for me, wasn't it? <laughs> but it was really was. But I may say. What a, what a charming stretcher, and eloquent speech you made. I got up there, I got flustered, I immediately resorted to swearing and bumbling and walking around <laughs> and being rude funny. about people. John came up, he handled it with class, yeah, he, he was a class act, he made us we laugh, he made us events. think, it was marvellous. <laughs> I, I, hats off, I, I looked on and I I wish I could say I learned, but I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were at different events. It was great. Yeah, it was a good evening, actually, wasn't it? Because we had that very, very large meatloaf, didn't we? Very large meatloaf, meatloaf came on stage and... Stayed and Turned the, the night upside down, yes, of course, as yes, he does. He did. But it was a, it and was a, Jones. It, it's quite an interesting radio when you a night of that, and you realise what a broad church it is yeah. in this country. Fantastic, and fantastic, how many talented yeah. people are working yeah, in it? Exactly. We're the exactly. most talented, obviously, because we won the award, <laughs> yeah, and that yeah, makes you feel better. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, there are some great people there. Do but you isn't feel it nice part of the community of, of radio? Oh, totally. In a way you never feel in television, I mm. think. Because radio, it's, it's more intimate, isn't it? And you but I don't, I don't know whether I said on that, but when I joined... Uh, the BBC, which is probably 40 odd years ago, um, my then boss said, you'll be doing it at radio, but don't worry about that. You know, and I said, well, can you teach? I've never done it. Can you teach? No, you don't need to teach. No, no, because that's, that's going now. That, that, uh, how wrong? Hey? Mm. I mean, look at radio now. Yeah, huge. Television would beg for some of our audiences, wouldn't they? They no? would. they come begging. They would. <laughs> they, they come do. begging. I mean, hat. you get more listeners, I gather, than the 9 o'clock or the 10 o'clock, as it now is, news on television. I did not know that. I think that's true. I think you will find that's true. Well, because people, when they come to us, they know that we'll deliver the straight line and stuff. We won't dress it <laughs> up. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. no and you are an inherently show. serious person. 
person. Yeah, I think yeah. fundamentally. I've noticed so. that listening yeah. to you over the years. Yeah, I'm glad. You never, s- the, never a joke, never a rise. I'm smile, glad you've seen so. through the clown's yeah. facade. <laughs> <laughs> um, John, I'm keen as mustard to see Mastermind. I can't wait to see it back on the screens. Now, one final question about it. Presumably, mm. the chair, because Magnus stole the chair when he left. Magnus took the chair. We've got a, a rather crueler chair now because they can't lean back in it quite so much. So Psychologically, they have to lean mm. forward, and it is. Cr- I sat in it. I did try it. I sat there with the spotlight on and looking across at that and all everything else in blackness and the audience all around you but you can't see it. it's terrifying yeah it really is oh. i'm looking forward to seeing it monday night bbc2 8 p.m you've done most of them. i know you have the final still to do so you still don't know to the do outcome. the final don't know the outcome no, uh, but it, but it's fun for you it's great i've thoroughly enjoyed it. well the first few i was terrified i'm now getting into the swing of it I, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it i'm really looking forward to seeing it as always uh, the, on radio i think there is the, there are none better there is no one better on the radio doing what John does than John himself. There's well, no doubt about it. Well, very kind of you. I would like to return the compliment, God if bless. I may. You may do. What, what do I do, though? That's the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's see, why you're so good at it. As soon as we analyse that, you see, the whole compliment collapses. Uh, John, thank you so much for coming. Thanks, Jonathan. Keep, keep doing the work, and I'm looking forward to Mastermind. Have that's a great right. weekend. Thank you.